What's up everybody? Welcome to my new video. Can we convert a number to a string? Maybe. First off, okay, I, I didn't start with the clean slate. Let me just delete this. Let's go ahead and train again because I had already completed this for like JavaScript and Python and I don't know what other languages, but here we have a function that's going to be a string. Let me... I don't know if I'm a, I don't think I'm a new CMath. So let me switch it for a string. So I'm going to return a string. We're going to name it number two string. Keyword two string. We're going to have an integer. Let's do it this way. That's just how we do it. No, really. Anyways. Um. Uh, yeah, so pretty much return to string num. I believe that's what it is. And then we can say, we can say, let's do number to string. Boom. Boom. All right, let's see if we can get it. Let's go ahead and compile. Compiled successfully, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, I, I can't tell if it's a number or not, but I guess there might be a way to tell if there's a number, and that would be maybe addition to another string. So let's say, I don't know, ABC. Let's try it on one, because I don't want to try it on all three of them, and then it just doesn't work. Okay, so again, it compiles successfully. Now, if we see 12 ABC, then it's a string. Because an integer and a letter, I don't think would do that. Unless you were on JavaScript. So it did. So it did complete them successfully. So, all we got to do here is copy this right here that's all we did it's just a one-liner so copy this here paste it in here boom right there test it okay we're getting an error and that's because include string I already in file included use of undeclared identifier oh wait Two string, what what are you talking about? Maybe who knows? Maybe I need to include I don't have everything. IO string, maybe. What else? Oh you know what? I do have um using namespace. I don't know if that's gonna do something mysterious. Now I have to delete it here. Let's see if it works this way. There it is, it works. Okay, so we could add a using namespace. I didn't add it on the last challenge as well because I just didn't know if it was gonna work or not. And now we're attempting it, see if it officially works, okay? Submit it, and there it is. For our next challenge, very simple. Given an integer or a floating point, find its opposite. That I feel like I can do it without going in here. So that could just be uh, just return number. But when you return it, return the opposite. So just add a negative sign. That should do the job normally. Let's see if it does it though. Okay, so with the test, it does run. Let's go ahead and attempt it. And it works. Submit it. This is, these easy ones are just kind of to get comfortable with C++. I'm starting to, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I feel not where I want to be, but I, I do feel more comfortable. There's this level of comfort, though. Like, with JavaScript that I had, it's just... I felt like, you know, I just... I had it. But we'll get there. It takes a little bit of time, obviously. You can't just wake up one morning tomorrow morning and just go, oh yeah. But next up, we're gonna reverse strings. 
It is a little bit difficult with C++ unless I haven't really taken a deep dive in the string methods or member functions they call them here. So if I do this manually, it may take a little bit of time because I have to do for loops. So starting right now, I'm gonna actually end the video here. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all have a good ass day. We'll continue this um, on the next video. Peace out.